day, my name is Bibi Linden and I'm going to talk about managing some mango monkey populations in the contrasting landscapes of the South Pansberg today. First, I would like to give you some background on some mango monkeys. They are South Africa's only forest dwelling Cercopithecus monkey, being highly restricted to high canopy indigenous forests. They are group living, with one male leading a group of females and their offspring, and they are male dispersed. Males have to leave their maternal group when reaching sexual maturity to disperse, and they do so as single or bachelor males. There are three different subspecies of Samango monkeys found in South Africa, and the one in the South Pansberg is listed as endangered. To give you some background on the forests of the study area, the forests of the South Pansberg are highly fragmented, and this is due to two processes. One is the natural process, a slow process, through paleoclimatic fluctuation, um, seeing glacial and interglacial periods, causing the expansion and contraction repeatedly of forests and shaping the distribution of forests as we see it today. And the second is through anthropogenic fragmentation, which is a much faster process through deforestation, agriculture, urban sprawl, etc. On the right, you can see a picture from the eastern South Pansberg showing the remainings of um, high canopy indigenous evergreen forests surrounded by clear felled blue gum plantations. The study area is located in the northern parts of South Africa in the Limpopo province. And as you can see here in the middle of the map is the outlines of the South Pansberg and to the south, the northern escarpment. Here's a further map showing anthropogenic landscape change in our study area. And as you can see, there are some stark contrasts between the east and the west. Generally, high canopy evergreen forests suitable for Samanga monkeys only occur in the southern stretch of the map. And you can see in the east, these forest patches are surrounded by Sylvian agriculture, urban areas, and human infrastructure such as tar roads. Whereas in the west, indigenous forests are largely surrounded by a natural vegetation, and in this case, South Pansberg Mountain bushveld. Our study comprised three different aspects. We wanted to investigate how anthropogenic and natural habitat fragmentation has impacted on the distribution of Samango monkeys, their population genetic structure, and how specifically anthropogenic fragmentation is causing direct threats to Samango monkeys. For the distribution survey, we did direct forest patch surveys and public participation. For the population genetics, we collected fecal samples and tissue samples whenever available from four populations across the South Pansberg, and we also included an outgroup from Mahurbiskloof in the northern escarpment. Here we wanted to see if the South Pansberg Samango population as a whole is isolated or if there is still connection to the escarpment, and if the populations across the South Pansberg are genetically connected or not. As part of the distribution survey, we were able to identify roadkill as one of the most important direct threats Samango monkeys are facing in this anthropogenically transferred landscapes in the east. And here we recorded every Samango monkey roadkill we encountered. Um, we took GPS points and then we had to think about how we could mitigate these roadkills. And we went and did some experiments on habituated Samango monkeys at a research center where we tested different bridge designs and where we also set up different canopy cover scenarios to see how and when the Samango monkeys would use artificial crossing structures. We were further able from the data set to identify high risk areas for future roadkill mitigation projects. Coming to the main results of our distribution survey, on these three maps shown here, you can see the distribution of forest patches in the South Pansberg, which we mapped. And you can see on um, figure A is the entire South Pansberg with um, 9,285 hectares. And then on B and C is a, a zoomed in version for each the Eastern South Pansberg and Western South Pansberg. And you can see that in the East, we've got far greater, more extensive forest habitat available or Samango monkeys than we've got in the, in the West. In the West, this is largely um, a function of past climatic changes and current climatic conditions. The Western South Pansberg has got uh, a much lower annual average rainfall and thus doesn't support these vast forested areas of the 
found in the eastern Sapansberg. Our distribution survey was undertaken across the mountain and we found three main gaps of the mango monkey distribution. And as you can see in map A, the distribution gap on the far left coincides with the Sand River Gorge, a main geographic feature. Then the distribution gap in the middle, you can see we are lacking suitable contiguous forest habitat. So we did not find some mango monkeys in the middle South Pansburg, just to the north of Louis Trichard. And then there is a third distribution gap um, on the right in the eastern part, which coincides with a highly transformed commercially used agricultural landscape. Our distribution survey also revealed the extent to which the Samango monkeys were using the surrounding matrix. In this table, you can see the different matrix components and divided into males and groups and east and west. Interesting was here that there were differences between males and groups when it came to the matrix utilization. For example, we found quite a few males associated with human habitation, gardens surrounding houses, um, which was not really the case with um, groups of Samango monkeys. Only in two cases we found that, and there the forest was basically part of the garden surrounding the house. And then we found a large number of distribution points on roads. And this is obviously quite concerning, as roads pose a big risk to some anger monkeys. And also, um, it was interesting to see that roads are not posing a, an absolute barrier to some anger monkeys, but that they would choose to also cross on a road if they need to get from A to B. This was all only found in the eastern South Pansburg. Distances Samango monkeys would move away from their primary forest habitat also differed between groups and males, whereas for groups we found that they would move 1.3 kilometers away and with males up to 4.1 kilometers. This is obviously a, a nice tool to get an idea of connectivity between forest patches on a landscape scale of how far away forest patches can be from each other in order to facilitate genetic connectivity or recolonization of forests that have lost their local population. The main results on our population genetic analysis were based on 13 microsatellite loci. And on the right, you can see the five different populations we sampled. And in the, in the pie charts, um, you can see um, the sample sizes for each population. So the analysis of genetic structure, which we did using structure, AMOVA and DAPC, um, all indicated that we are looking at five distinct populations genetically. And um, this obviously indicates that there's a lack of contemporary gene flow and that populations are or have become quite isolated. Considering the longitudinal nature of the study area we were in, we were quite interested to see of what role distance, geographic distance, plays in the, structure, in the genetic structuring of populations. And here we could clearly find a correlation between the larger ge the geographic distance between populations, the larger also the genetic distance. What was interesting here, though, was that there was an exception between the two furthest eastern populations who showed greater genetic distances than were expected by geographic distance. And um, these are the two populations that are separated by a distribution gap shown to you earlier, um, made up of highly transformed agricultural areas. So this indicates that other factors apart from distance in the surrounding matrix can play a role of isolating populations. The roadkill results showed that we found 21 roadkills in the past eight years and two hotspots only in the eastern part of South Pansburg. And then we went and tested the bridges and it was quite clear here that the Samango monkeys preferred um, the pole bridges significantly to the rope bridges. Apart from the preferred crossing structure, we were also interested to see of how the monkeys choose the crossing way and under which conditions. So the monkeys had three different ways to cross a road. That's on a tree, in the canopy, on the ground, or on one of the artificial bridges. 
And then we use three treatments of canopy cover across the road, covered, open and partially covered, and wanted to see how this impacts the choice of how the monkeys cross the road. Overall, the monkeys preferred crossing the road on bridges than on the ground. So this means that an artificial crossing structure is successful in getting an arboreal creature off the ground, um, which is obviously very important for roadkill mitigation. We then further found that they preferred crossing on bridges under open and partial canopy cover. So as soon as the canopy is not continuous anymore across the road, the Samango monkeys would then go onto the bridges. Again, they would not go onto the ground. And unsurprisingly, if the canopy cover was closed, the Samango monkeys would prefer to stay in the canopy and use the natural way um, of traveling through the canopy. So all of these findings are quite informative when it comes to road con new road construction or also modification of existing roads to try and mitigate road kills of arboreal primates. Coming to the key findings of our study, we found that distance between and matrix surrounding forest patches have influenced the distribution and genetic structure we observe in the Samangos today. There are different threats to Samango monkeys between the east and the west. And in fact, we found that populations in the east and populations in the west are likely completely isolated from each other. There are different threats to lone and bachelor males and groups. Solid pole bridges are a very viable roadkill mitigation measure. And that although some mango monkeys appear comparatively adaptable, direct threats and forest isolation may pose a risk in the future. Based on our results, we recommend separate conservation and management strategies for the eastern and western parts of the mountain, an explicit mention of maternal groups and lone bachelor males, corridor identification and management to facilitate gene flow and recolonization of forest patches, and the implementation of roadkill mitigation measures at hotspots identified in our study. Thank you for your attention.